Oh man, what the hiding in here? DMF is quicker in. You in there, Annie? I did see something move on this window, it might have been a... A lover's betrayal. <laughs> Eton College was founded in 1440 by King Henry VI. Back in 1912, a tragic murder took place in this building. A domestic servant by the name of Annie Wentworth worked for a Mr. Booker, a master at Cotton Hall House. She stopped working for him in December 1907 and then returned in August 1912. During her time away from this job in January 1908, she met a soldier named Eric Sedgwick. He was posted to India and was discharged in 1912. He returned to England and was reunited with Annie. By this time, he was 27 and Annie was 24. Everything was going well until Annie started to see a possessive, bad-tempered and sometimes violent man in Eric. On the 5th of October, he wrote Annie a letter asking her to meet him in London. As Annie was serving in Eton College, she could not leave. Eric turned up at Cotton Hall House in a terrible mood. The couple spent the evening out, and when he dropped Annie off, she was very upset. She saw her friend Edith Armstrong, who was the head housemaid, and suddenly burst into tears. A few days later, Eric wrote a postcard to Annie's mother, saying that he will never marry Annie, as he started off the night whistling and came back cursing, and said, There's something about Annie. He also sent a letter to Annie, declaring how madly in love with her he was. The letter started off charming, but took a disturbing turn. It said that she had accused him of being unfaithful, and that she had said nothing would separate them, and if she was true to him, they should be together dead. On November 10th, Eric took Annie out again for the evening. The following morning, she spoke to Edith and said she had ended the relationship with Eric after he had confessed to being unfaithful. She said she never wanted to see him again. On November 19th, he begged Annie for forgiveness. She insisted that she wanted nothing to do with him. Eric wouldn't take no for an answer and returned to Eton on the 24th of November. Edith let him in and called Annie to see him. They were speaking loudly in the pantry. Edith had a bad feeling about him and made it known to Eric that she was in the next room. She heard Annie say to Eric, you must go now, you must go. Assuming everything was okay, Edith went back upstairs and was soon beckoned back down by Mrs. Booker. Edith rushed into the pantry and saw Annie lying on a chair with Eric looming over her as she was bleeding from her chest. Eric was smothering Annie in kisses, saying that no one shall tear us apart. She was barely conscious, replying with moans. The maids tried to dress her wound. She died 15 minutes later. He went on trial on the 15th of January, 1913. During his trial, his lawyer, Mr. Campion, addressed degrees of insanity. He said as he had a return half railway ticket, a parcel of chocolate, and violets in his pocket, that there was no intention to murder Annie. He was, however, found guilty and sentenced to death at the Reading Jail. He was hanged on the 4th of February, 1913. This story intrigued us, so we traveled to Eton and found Cotton Hall House where the murder happened. We wanted to see if we could contact either Annie or Eric. I want to know what they're hiding in here. Okay, here it is. That cotton hole. This is where it happened. Where it happened, yeah. Yeah, these are the flats where she, well, we're presuming she would have lived as she worked in the property, but she didn't live in the property. 
Who knows? This could have been her house right here. These windows just scream, I've got a ghost living inside of me. They're very creepy. So we're going to go ahead and start this investigation. If there is anybody here with us right now, we are here to communicate with James Sedgwick or Annie Davis. If any of you are here with us, could you let us know now? What's your name? Ooh. Are you in there, Annie? If anyone is here with us, could you give us your name, please? What happened to you, Annie? You're stabbed? Can you give us the name of the house in which you died? In which you were murdered? Here, but what's the name? I just heard cotton. I thought I heard it. Can you tell us what Eric bought you that day? Chocolates. Did you hear chocolates? Someone coming. What else did he bring you? Standing. Call who else? <laughs> Is that what it sounded like? You just kind of hear that, yeah. Can you tell us what Eric did for a living? Yeah, Eric, what did he do for a living? Can you tell us where Eric was sent to go to war? What happened to Eric after he murdered you? You ripped my way through 
past that window or something moved inside of it. Yes. If you're in the house, honey, could you move the curtain? What happened to you, Eric, after you killed Annie? Where did they take you and what did they do? Redding? I heard Redding, yeah. What happened to you in Redding? Did you hear that? What did you do that made Annie want to leave you? I heard Eric. I thought I'd guess. Annie, can you tell us the name of your friend that worked with you? Your friend that comforted you. What was it? Daddy. I heard it there. Uh huh. Davis, where did Eric stab you? Does it hurt? Kind of. Okay. What do you want us to know about Eric? He's a dead man. How was he killed? Did you forgive him, Annie? He's here. After I just said, I heard a man's voice say, I love you, or something like that. Eric, are you here with us? We're gonna turn this box off now. Um, if you want to communicate, we're gonna try picking up the EVPs. All you have to do is speak into the device that Becky here is holding. This device right here that I'm pointing at. Okay, so let's say goodbye for now on this box. I did see something move on this window. It might have been a. Crazy. What? This thing's going crazy. Right there. Is that you, Eric? Would you like to say something to us? If so, speak into this device right here. Wow, that's weird. What could be causing that? Look, it's literally just right here. I wonder if there's something under here. What do you think? I'm gonna bring it up to here, it doesn't do it. Just look, it's minor.
Kind of there must be something in the floor, huh? I wonder. Something creating an EMF. So if you want to speak to us, just uh, talk in this device in my hand. We're here to communicate with Andy Davis or Eric Sedgwick or Eric Sedgwick or Eric Sedgwick. If you're here with us, let us know. must be like something I don't know if it's like it, I don't I don't know what creates there's gotta be something under here that creates a would it pick field. it up underneath all that concrete that's a good question it's still going crazy look it's really weird check that was a person I think so Sounded like a hello from the spirit box, it's really weird. Oh, maybe. Wow, there's something about these windows that gave me the heebie jeebies. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Oh. Let's do a lap around here. Wow. Pretty cool over here. Cotton Hall. See, the Cotton Hall house goes all the way around this area, so. It'd be really cool if we could pick up some EVPs or maybe Annie if you're here if you could uh, give us a sign to another side of the building. We are actually now at the back of Cotton yeah. Hall House. So we're gonna go ahead and try another session here. Eric Sedgwick, if you are here with us, could you let me know what you did for a living? What was your job? Is this week that you were talking to? I had Eric and a girl's voice. Are you here with us, Annie? Annie Wentworth Davis, are you here with us? By your side. By my side? What side? My right or my left? Right. right. After you left Eric, he came back to see you. What happened that day? Can't live without you. Say that. Can you give us the name of the house? That he killed you at? I heard a lot in there. I Some did. It sounded pretty good. Yeah, me too. That was pretty good, but can you tell us one more time the name of the house? Paired house. 
Mm -hmm. What did Eric say to you after he stabbed you? Just to confirm that this is Amy Davis that we're speaking with. Could you tell us where Eric stabbed you? <laughs> did Titty? Which is underneath her titty. <laughs> This door. I reckon that's what these are coming on out of. Yeah, I reckon it probably is. Isn't that spooky looking? It is. Do you see that? Did it go off? Yeah. Yep, right there. Wow. I remember, I think that phone might set it off too, so. Drag the phone back. Here. My arms are a bit longer. Go up a bit? Yep, it's right around here. Oh, that's weird. You might have to get the light out. Can we get the light out? Eric, if you're here with us, this device I'm holding in my hand is a flashlight. It has a battery in it, and it's said that you can drain the power from these things to manifest. If you wish to do so, feel free. We'll lose our light, but maybe it'll be easier for us to communicate. Wow. If we didn't have this light, it would be pitch black down here. Yeah, it would. You look. Yeah. Pitch black. Wow. Where the heck is this taking us? I don't know when back out to the road, huh? Well, let's take this to a little trail. Oh. Look at over there, I think it's that bridge that we know. No way, is it? Wow. Very interesting. It goes that way, doesn't it? We probably need to go that way. We just stumbled across this graveyard on our way back to looping around the house. Skated off though, so we can't go and have a nose around inside. I wonder if that's where um, any of them are buried. This concludes our investigation of the Cotton Hall House murder. Let us know if you saw or heard anything we missed. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. See you next time on I Want to Believe You.